I would say a possibility and a challenge at the same time. As a practicing lawyer and uh, representing uh, media industry in the courts all the time, I can assure you that uh, whenever a news report comes on Twitter, which perhaps is the fastest medium today, uh, it directly reaches the uh, courtroom even before a judgment is uh, formally pronounced or read. Uh, you are now able to see that it is already mentioned, it is already tweeted, it has gone to some other media platform. Even on LinkedIn, people are using it very prominently nowadays. By the time we come out of the court, we already know that some order has been passed. Uh, we are just telling, telling some, somebody that this is what has happened. So the traditional medium of uh, a correspondent actually taking the notes from the court, going off outside, relaying it to the TV uh, studios, is something which has been permanently disrupted. At the same time, when the Hudson River air crash had happened and it was first reported on a social media, before it actually was broadcasted by any news channel. That opened the eyes for the world that what is going to happen to the newsroom. It's a big opportunity. You can interact with the uh, viewer or a consumer of news directly now, but the viewer also gets a chance to comment upon a news for the first time, which was not there. Earlier it was like, I have given you a news, take it, like it, dislike it, it is not connected with me. But now the newsrooms are getting ready with a very interactive kind of platform where they are talking to uh, the viewer directly. The viewer is also very restless about it and that has become much more interactive. But a bigger challenge which, uh, which is looming large and that is something which you, you have to see the governments are dealing with, the fourth state is dealing with, the judiciary has to also deal with that. Whether they are publishing platforms, whether they are public, publishing platforms where they are liable for any kind of news which is coming out in the public domain. I am talking about primarily about Twitter, WhatsApp or for that matter Facebook. So I will, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll deliberate more these issues that how much is this an advantage and how much it is a challenge with the mobile becoming a new place. I think print has not been greatly affected as of now, but newsroom is generally affected. I will first give it to uh, Varun, uh, who, will, who as the CEO of one of the prominent channels of the country, will say that how this social media is affecting the newsroom. Because any media company is a news aggregating company. We have content which we distribute across time. So what has happened is digital is also given us a new platform. Thus it gives us a huge feedback on what our stories are. And of course both the system of reading for TV and for digital are completely More important is, yes, Tangular, as you said, digital has become one of the primary and breaking news is the order of the day as far as television is So both complement each other. A lot of stories are broken from there. But at the same time, we are very careful for the density of the story because there is a lot of fake news on the digital. So while both the mediums are complementing each other, but uh, I see the newsroom getting more data digitally now in time to come and that is what any of the broadcasters that I make are working with. Uh, uh, your thoughts, uh, Chetan, on this entire thing? Uh, well, firstly, uh, it's important to understand whether we should call this social media or unsocial media. Uh, because very often is what uh, Warren was talking about when it comes to elements like fake news. And we are already battling the credibility of news in conventional media, right, to just compound the theory of uh, of, uh, of news which perhaps are not the most credible. But I think uh, the opportunity part is, uh, is, is also very critical to understand that what is social media? Social media is now become another source of news for new agents like us, for journalists. So while you used to have the uh, traditional wires, you used to have your sprinklers operating uh, across the country, you used to have international wires uh, as a source of news, of course you have the media. Uh, social media has now become a new source. The fact is, because it is so instinctive, uh, it's so measurable, uh, it's so dynamic by nature, the sourcing of it requires specialized hands. It requires far younger hands. And uh, it requires hands uh, mostly multiplied. So in that environment, I just think it's a new way of approaching business. Yes, the interactivity is there from the point of view of the viewer because you get a response uh, to what you want. But I think uh, 
you know, to mention it is to talk about, uh, uh, you know, vitamin M, which is very important with money. But uh, there are a lot of M's in, uh, in, uh, uh, in, the, in the new media. One of those uh, M's is uh, the morphing of roles in social media. Now, with social media coming and technology coming to the fore, you see uh, the role of the editor, the role of the reporter, the role of uh, the producer are all being merged into one. They are very, the areas are far greater than black and white. And that the good news is that you could have reduced manpower. The bad news is you don't get the, the appropriate manpower to do that work. Uh, because they're not institutions which have kept up with technology to be able to disseminate that. So while social media is a great opportunity, I don't think that we have the necessary infrastructure in place or the requisite manpower to be able to leverage that to its, its extreme. And that's why perhaps you will not get the benefits of it. Okay, uh, I'll ask you one more question before I go back to uh, one man. This is very relevant that uh, if you talk about newsroom, which is more on urban centers, but whatever language, whether it's English or any urban centers in manageable cities, uh, how much uh, adaptability is there for uh, uh, for Hindi heartland, for the newsroom there, uh, or about the social media, and how much the transition is happening for a journalist? for him to be compelled to write something in 140 words now. Is the transition difficult for them? Are they getting apt to that? So, uh, okay, I'll come to another end. I talked about uh, money, I talked about uh, measurement, I talked about more people. Uh, this game is very critical. This is mind space. Uh, right now, what social media has done, it's fragmented and it's diminished the mind space in the eyes of you. He has very little time, his bandwidth is very short. So you've got to catch that attention. So 140 words, I think, uh, uh, well, may be relevant at some point in time. Uh, I don't think there's uh, anything to suggest that it could be otherwise. But uh, what social media has given rise to is, is video content, which replaces the characteristics. So when you're dealing with a situation where uh, you have to catch attention immediately, uh, catch this attention and abundance, uh, catch attention amongst a lot of options. You've got to play more on the video content, on the visual aspect of things, and then have interesting captions to support that. So rather than going into even in print for that matter, so rather than just going into the number of characteristics, the 140 word story, and any language, I mean, but it's a language agnostic, I think the visual element and the capturing element is the most critical. So, plan to get the other. Yeah, but you know, I, uh, I think we are forgetting a basic point. The technology is changing. Today, video, and thanks to Geo and the revolution that has happened, video is available everywhere. But I have one uh, point by digital is the key. Everybody is talking digital. I'll just narrate two examples on how people still come back to the traditional media to see the veracity of the news, whether it is right or wrong. Uh, one example was the Shiri Bindu device. While it was broken at, 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 at the digital platform, but people came back to TV to watch it late at night, whether it is true or not. Second, it was a fake news that I was talking about was the demise of MDH owner, Marcia Dharapan, who had not died, but trust me, Sunday morning, the kind of calls I got, and we had to issue a ticker saying that he's alive and he's healthy. So there are, it's a two-prong thing. Technology is helping us, but how well we use technology and what Chetan said, I 100% agree. That is one industry where some sort of new regulations have to come in. Because then what will happen is, the news can be presented more better. The, the, the uh, authenticity of it will not be challenged, right? And both the mediums will work together towards a coexistence. In fact, uh, just extended to uh, what Varun said, I think uh, it's important to understand that this digital is not replacing it is supporting, it's complementing, it's supplementing. Uh, just the way it happened, uh, you know, when uh, uh, when uh, the internet came, and there was print. Newspapers are still being sold in this country. So it is a great supplement. I think there are horses for horses. We have to be intelligent and intelligible to understand the difference. Uh, we would like to believe that by and large, digital media will cater to a shorter format of news. And the larger format, uh, 
terms of opinions and whatever you can extract from that news, which is more engaging, will come from international media. So, uh, to answer in fact uh, what Barun was talking about, the Sri Devi himself, while it was broken on, on, on social media and it went viral on social media, people wanted to understand more about the news, not just the veracity, they also want to understand what are people's opinions about it, right? What is the theory of it? And because it became news for three days, you couldn't have that in you had to resort to convention Even in, you know, uh, yesterday the most unfortunate uh, uh, Bulwama attack, I mean, you could just get the news coming to you in the media. But if you want a sense of engagement, you know, to actually be able to sensitize yourself with the intent, with the intention of uh, being able to understand and comprehend that. And also to be, uh, well, uh, a responsible citizen of the country, you'd like to be engaged. With its in like this. And its implication in an election scenario, its implication in a national scenario, and uh, of course, uh, just to build up the fervor, you know, because this is where opinions count. So, I think yesterday's incident also reignites the need and the, uh, the relevance of, of the convention. Yeah. So, uh, just to build up upon this, like, the good news is generally if I see how the uh, more developed. Uh, news economies of the world are behaving, that uh, despite social media being very, uh, very, very quick to be in our, in our eye space, uh, ultimately discretion of the journalist or discretion of an editor is something that the world has always been moving towards. So the same survives the print, uh, that's the reason why if you have to read the article in Hindu, you will read nonetheless. If you want to read Indian Express or Times of India, you will read the same. And the same is happening in TV now. That if you, even if you get a feed from a Twitter or any other platform, but ultimately you choose your own content uh, when it comes to TV, because the journalist distribution is always better than all these uh, software-based distribution, what you should be printed down and I should be consuming in those days. That's a very good sign. So is social media further fueling the demand for good journalists? Uh, I think uh, one very uh, appropriate word for a community is the word of aggregation. At the end of the morning, you're able to aggregate opinions across the board. I think uh, your need may actually diminish. You know, you can get uh, Let's say I'm, I'm a new client, but if I have access to several opinions that come with the form, I may not need to invest in my own opinions. Volume. If I'm getting an aggregation of great opinions coming across, I can see that in, I can represent that as, as a, in a more broader manner perhaps in more intuitive way. So, well, you we'll always have need for good journalists, but I think you have, uh, you need uh, the need for good thinking and fertile minds across the industry and uh, media media's world. I feel, uh, thanks to digital, a lot of young journalism is coming to Fresh journalism is coming to There are stories that you can relate to. But I mean, everything is not only about digital, everything is not about TV, everything is not about print. Ultimately, journalism is journalism, whichever way you do. If your story is wrong, whether it is on TV, digital, it will be passed. In TV, it is right down by the ratings you get. In, in, in the digital world, it's right on the face. So you have to have a balance between the two. But uh, what Chetan has been saying, I feel you will have more better job opportunities for young people to come in now. And, and there is a more need with the editorial people are exercising of getting a differentiated content, a new content, which is just not a normal content. I think, you know, you have to look at that in terms of the relevance. I mean, India is uh, the world's youngest country, it's getting younger every single day. So what is the relevance for them? I mean, is it going to be state politics? So it's important also to see that the people who are the helm of affairs across channels are younger. To be able to understand that relevance. So if you're going to have the same kind of people, right, to expect the same kind of news, right, and Tom Tom is used to completely irrelevant uh, uh, to young India, I think you're going to be out of business. So we've got to recognize that, and that's where you've got to feel. And it's just not about good journalism, it's also about good opinion makers. And it's got to be across all sections of society, uh, because just the way job opportunities now have changed, you know, the only thing just be uh, and the architect, if you, if you please. Uh, now the options for young India are far, far and, uh, and many.
in an environment like that, the need to cover all those areas, also, in media, is relevant. So you've got to change the way so, of changing uh, you. So, uh, uh, what I will ask you is, you as a business um, uh, CEO who runs the company from purely the perspective of uh, representation also and the social part of it, you think that social media is a great amplifier which is allowing a subcontinent uh, channels like yours to be perceived and you across the world because you can leave from now. Is that a business model as well? Uh, see, digital, as I told you, uh, if you are talking about, is another parameter where I disseminate my information to the digital platform. I am a content educator. The news companies are now becoming content educators. So content educators go through in my company, disseminate and play, we have our television channels, at the same time we have our digital assets which are building up. Now what has happened for a person like me, we have three different options of earning money. Right? And digital also is becoming a new option. So what is happening is digital is becoming a more of a boom for me than a big. Right? So what has happened is thus, you are watched anywhere you want to be watched, irrespective you are on the distribution platform or not. So your dependence on a distribution platform in times to come might go off on certain news channels. Right? Because ultimately the kind of money we all pay and Chetan and we were discussing your coming on the distribution platform is humongous. So if that doesn't bring down, digital is one way to reach out to our wider set of audience and then but the yeah. audience comes back to television to get a viewpoint from an editorial angle. And that helps me. Yeah. I make money both ways. So, uh, you, just to add to that, you know, I think uh, it's not just the revenue generation as uh, what Bharat was saying. The cost of distribution it is prohibitive in conventional media. You just cannot make money on the point, right? Uh, so, you need that cost of distribution to be rationalized. I'm not saying people may be poor, but it has to be rationalized. And uh, for that, which is the cost of the poor. I mentioned about manpower. If you have multitasking of manpower, to the digital platform, you will have a cost. Uh, uh, control that. And uh, in the overall scenario of things, I think uh, digital is moving up. Right? It's, it's moving the goal. One very important aspect, uh, which all of us need to continue to talk about, is measurement. You see, uh, digital measurement is far more transparent than conventional media measurement. And when you work in an environment which is not measurable or transparent, then it leads to you know areas of cartelization. And uh, it actually impedes new players from coming in, which is very unfortunate. So the more transparency you have in measures which digital actually brings about, I, I, I think it encourages even more people. So uh, just to supplement you, which I will ask for this is, you, you are a new age new TV pro channel uh, who is coming to this. It's a very recent yes, as recent as this year, if I am correct. Right. Well, well, last year. The last year, just few months, uh, in the last year. So you must have conditioned all these factors. So what is the uh, new disruption which you have brought in the new group of the keeping social media? Well, I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, the first, that's why I was even immediately able to tell you that uh, my man part was the follow because I caught that in mind, right? So I was able to just try and identify those people who can work across the platforms. Uh, my process cost was a bit That was the advantage I had because I was able to, uh, you know, disseminate information on two platforms, you know, using the same device. Also, the same number of people. And uh, very importantly, I chose to have uh, a very young newsroom. The members in the country say that with a lot of pride. And uh, that's because I need to get the relevance of the people who are moving away from television. Right? And a lot of people are. In fact, English television is a diminished part of that. People have moved away because of the negative that's being perceived. So, to bring that positivity, that progressiveness, has to come from the younger part. That's, that's what I just what, uh, One of my last questions would be to you, and one I'll ask you, Jason. Which is the views who you admire in the world, actually? And one in the world and one in India, which is so geared up to the social media? Uh, in the world, CNN. Okay. The way they have mapped out, the, the way they have changed themselves, for a period of time, it's worth watching, understanding. In India, I think my country. Wonderful. That I, I was expecting. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not because no, that also. No, I, 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 I just believe in it. No, sure. I, I tell you why. Because the kind of numerous channels mm -hmm. we have around, which is more important to the regional and all. There are a lot of stories on the English news channel which is broken from a regional area. So 
there is a lot of scope and as I told you, for me it is an opportunity, it is not a challenge. So it just can be one print also in India and the world? Print, I, I believe the way Times of India has shown us goes for yeah. making money, I, I don't think there is a better institution. And what, internationally? Internationally, I think it will be New York Times of India. I still read it on the net, whatever. So last day, uh, all these four questions. So, in fact, I agree with uh, modern on three accounts except for <laughs> for three obvious <laughs> one. Uh, and it's not because it's common, it's just yeah. because uh, uh, perhaps I have the advantage of having built something uh, from scratch. Right? So I can think from that. I think uh, what I walked into a system which is already established. So for him, it was probably more difficult to do. Uh, for me, because I had thought through that process and I was uh, conscious enough to uh, employ those kind of people in a very transparent manner and a young manner. So maybe that advantage I didn't have. So I'd invite you to. Now, wonderful is that. And uh, you, you admire the tree which he said, CNN? Yes, I would, I would like to believe. I think CNN has been uh, a signature uh, in many ways. I so, think, uh, so with this, I wrap up this session. My, my power moment actually being with these two gentlemen. Thanks a lot. Wonderful having you here.